sound like Eddie is making fun of the queen. Oh, you're a plumber. What on earth is that? What is up y'all? Welcome back. Today we're going to be unpacking pretty much the entire brand of Charlotte Tilbury. Now, I have said on my channel in various different ways over the many years I've been doing this that Charlotte Tilbury's makeup was on the whole overrated overpriced, overhyped. Her stuff tends to go viral, right? Even before virality was a thing, there were these like cult favorite formulas that you would just hear rumblings about on the internet. And they seem to stand the test of time. Like they seem to withstand the coming and going of trends. And they've also experienced a little bit of a revival lately on, oh, you know, that little app called TikTok where Gen Z, love y'all, really do appreciate you. Please watch my videos, tell your friends, is discovering a lot of things that have been around for a while and telling their friends about it on TikTok. And it's breathing new life into the popularity of these formulas. And Charlotte Tilbury is definitely not the only brand that that's happening to, but I figured that I would overcome my Milan we and my cynicism and just dive in on her entire brand. I have bought things here and there, for a while, but I just spent a whole bunch of money a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, on stuff from Charlotte Tilbury because her light ones came back into stock, some other stuff came back into stock, she had some new stuff come out, and I have been testing it and testing it and testing it. I filmed this face of makeup coming together, which is having a little trouble here, isn't it? I did apply a lot of her products. <laughs> I tried to fit as many of them on my face as I could. I do have my thoughts together on the products that I've had for a long time, the products that are newer to me, but essentially I'm just going to go product by product, share the demos as I have them, and also tell y'all even about the products that I don't have in my hands anymore that I have tried in the past or that I haven't tried yet, I'll let you know. But I'm determined to get the chip off of my shoulder about Charlotte Tilbury and give empirical reviews on these products. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, I am first going to start with some of the skincare that they actually sent me recently. I have only received a couple of things from Charlotte Tilbury in the past through PR and it's mostly skincare. So I did have the opportunity and have had the opportunity now for a few months to try Charlotte's Magic Cream, which is her original skincare product. They say that she made it backstage with other creams that she found and it was this like instant, what do they call this? Instant turnaround moisturizer for model skin and people who she was working on as a makeup artist and it was just an insanely good skin prep. So I have been using this and y'all, I think that it's great. It comes with refills so you don't have to buy this jar every single time and it is a glass jar. She's been moving into refillable packaging quite a lot lately and I love to see it. Normalize it. Bring it into the conversation. I'm over the moon about that and I have gotten this far into it. So I've used a little more than half of the jar and I would say that it is the most basic but also very effective moisturizer. Like it doesn't do anything wild. It doesn't have any actives in it. It doesn't have any kind of sensation. It's just very good. And I get it, like she combined a bunch of things that were very good and made something that was excellent. And it doesn't really promise much more than that. It doesn't have anything glossy or weird or balmy or sticky. It's not a primer. It's just a good moisturizer. It's a really good daytime moisturizer for me. I have dry skin. Now, her nighttime moisturizer, I don't even know where it is. I, I think I might have given it away. Y'all, that thing is weird. I am a huge fan of the overnight moisture cocoon. I guess they call it slugging now. I had high hopes for it because it really smells like old fashioned diaper cream. Like it's got something in it that is extremely occlusive, but they gotta do something about the stickiness. It's wildly sticky. And I have a high tolerance for that. I love the Thrive Overnight Sensation Mask and it's pretty sticky. This is on a whole nother level. This is like wake up in the middle of the night, peel your sheets off your face. <laughs> It's everywhere. So yeah, I just, I don't want to get too like hyperbolic about it, but it was a no-go for me. It was, it was a deal breaker. I, I would have put up with it if I could, but it was like, it was comical. Waking up in the middle of the night, my face, I felt like a catamari. Like everything was stuck to me. So I really like the formula. I like the effectiveness, but it's, they got to do something about the sticky texture. Now, 
What I did use before I started my makeup today, it was actually my first time using it. I like literally forgot that they sent it. It is this awesome, I'll grab it, this, this mask in the spirit of Charlotte Tilbury making refillable things. This is actually a reusable up to three times face mask. And what I adore about this, besides the fact that it is reusable a few times, this hooks onto your ears. It's so effective. It makes full contact with your skin. It's incredible. So it has a hook here and a hook here. It's really, really nice. It feels kind of like the Ally McBeal face bra. You notice that you're wearing it, but it's, it's like a hug. <laughs> I don't think it's uncomfortable at all. I think it's actually really wonderful. And when I took it off, I was like, oh, ew. Uh, it's got skincare in it. And so as it's sitting on your skin, it just kind of like soaks in and primes your skin and it comes off all like bouncier and like a little more hydrated. Big fan, was not expecting to love it, but I think it's awesome. And I personally, even though they sent me that, I will be repurchasing it because it's awesome. Like my computer had to update and so I had to like chill for 15 minutes anyway. And I was like, well, might as well. And I was like, okay, like noticeable change. She has a magic serum that I wore overnight for a few, I think about a week. And I just wanna say, I didn't notice anything from it. Nothing bad, but also nothing good. It was just like, it was just a serum. It didn't really do enough for me that I even noticed when I stopped using it, you know? Okay, let's talk about the actual makeup here. So I've tried a few of her foundations. In fact, I made a video a long, long time ago in 2018, I believe, trying what I thought were her three foundations. Turns out I thought that, and I don't think I was alone in this, but a lot of people probably thought that the Hollywood Flawless Filter at the time was a foundation. And I did a wear test of it like it was a foundation and it is not a foundation, but I tried the Magic Foundation and I tried the Light Wonder Foundation as well. The Magic Foundation didn't have much wear time. Not on me at least, it really broke up. I'm not sure if that one's been phased out. Light Wonder is so gorgeous, but it has ethyl hexylmethoxy cinnamate in it, which is another word for octanoxate. And that is a sunscreen ingredient, a chemical sunscreen ingredient that really bothers my skin, so I can't wear it, unfortunately. But if you can wear that ingredient, my goodness, what a beautiful, what a beautiful skin tint. I wore it to the US Open the first year that I went, and by the end of the day, as we're like back on New Jersey transit, my mother-in-law goes, you don't look like you've even like been out for hours. You look great. Your skin looks amazing. And I was like, man, this is Charlotte Tilbury's skin tint. It's, it was so good. I digress. Love that stuff. Wish I could wear it. Now, she has recently released the Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation. I did go and actually get shade matched for this because I ordered the wrong shade initially. I am the shade neutral one and it is an outstanding match. It's an outstanding match to the point that I feel very comfortable wearing it really sheerly or building it because if my skin shows through, that's fine. But if it's full coverage, it's not in contrast with my neck. I think it is lovely for me, especially. Now, the thing that I have found about this foundation is that it depends even more so than other skin tints, medium coverage foundations of this ilk that I have used, skin prep makes all the difference in the world. Because if I don't prep my skin well enough, like if I hadn't done that face mask or if I hadn't used the magic cream or if I hadn't just put on my sunscreen before I used this, it would behave completely differently for me. So if you have this and you're having trouble getting it to work, maybe try switching up your skin prep, maybe overcompensate a little bit more in one direction or another than you typically would because I find that this actually will dry out on me in an unexpected way. It doesn't really agree with my skin unless there's some skin prep to it because it's like it's got this gorgeous like glycerin -y finish but only if it stays stable on your skin if your skin starts to soak up the emollients in it it'll kind of break up a little bit too easily especially if you're trying to powder it to kind of take down the dewiness or extend the wear time it just starts to break up i think it's because it has a little tiny bit of luminosity to it most of her products do have some kind of radiance to them so that can sometimes look like it's particulating or not wearing as long. So again, even if it's not a moisture issue, for me spraying it down with a finishing spray at the end, like generously helps immensely just to make it look like the Charlotte Tilbury vibe. Now I am conscious of it, more so than something even like the Lisa Eldridge Foundation or the Shantikai Future Skin Gel, things that I would compare to like this weight of product. It's similar in 
the, the way that you notice it to like the Kosas. And it's not something that I necessarily mind, but I am like aware of it. It's kind of like when you reach up and touch your face and you're like, oh, I'm wearing makeup. Like that never happens with this because you know you're wearing makeup the whole time. Like you just feel it. It has a presence on the skin the same way that the Kosas does, the same way that like a lot of like true foundations do. So this is not, I mean, I, I know you knew this, but this is not a skin tint. It is very much a foundation and it feels like a foundation, but I adore the coverage on it. I really do. Like I had myself a an unsavory moment this morning where I did pick something on my forehead and you can barely even see it. I think that this has beautiful coverage that looks very natural and it does look like skin. I think that what it does is it actually lends itself to a lot of different skin types and flexibility of coverage and of the way that you might want to wear it. So it might just be that you need to use it a few times to get your head around exactly how you want it to look and maybe the products that you need to use with it. And not even in an apologetic manner. I think that you're gonna skin prep regardless. I always use a finishing spray kind of thing. I don't think that it's necessarily compensating for shortcomings of the formula. It's just about kind of understanding the formula and making it work optimally for what you want it to do because it can. Just bear in mind that if you are skipping on powder and you are using things that are a little bit more emollient, unless you're using like a hydro grip or something underneath it, it might diminish the wear time. That is one thing about Charlotte Tilbury's products is I don't feel like any of them particularly has like the world's longest wear time, but at the same time, it's A, I don't think that they break up in a really embarrassing way, and B, I don't know, I feel like we're all kind of still under the thumb of this like old fashioned idea of like makeup is supposed to be completely bulletproof or you're humiliated. It's like, no, it's okay if the world knows I'm wearing makeup and it's okay if it looks different at the end of the day than it does at the beginning of the day. There's absolutely no shame in that. So next, this is new. This is the Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. And yes, she is radiant. I got this in the shade too fair, quite light, but I find that just a little bit goes a long way. The only thing about this is, I don't know, it's not quite as much coverage as I would have liked, especially because the foundation builds so well. I was hoping that this was going to be like nuclear level coverage, but still have a beautiful radiance to it. However, I'm a huge fan of the radiance. I like starting from a place of radiance when it comes to an under eye concealer and I can work backwards from there with powder, but starting in a place of really nice radiance is my happy place because it's a blessing to get older it is, but I'm 35 and things are just changing. And I feel like every day is kind of a new lesson in adaptation where I'm just like, oh, oh, so we do that now. Okay, well, um, I guess I need to re-strategize a little bit. When I'm working with something that does have a little bit too much of like a matte dry down, I get a little frustrated with it because I'm like, well, now what do I do? You know, it's already looking crepey and I haven't even powdered it yet. I would rather it be like this and be a little bit more radiant because it just does me a lot of favors. I think it's very pretty. I would have probably gone one deeper on the shade if I could have just because it's a little bit wildly bright, you know? And I think that with a radiant concealer, there's something to be said for going really close to your skin tone because it's gonna look brightened anyway. So you can, and I didn't go in store and get shade matched for this, but I do still really, really like it. I think it's very pretty, it's very comfortable to wear, and it's very hydrating for those of us who need that under our eyes heard that many people talking about it. I think maybe the radiance kind of puts some people off. Okay, let's talk about her two powders that I, I think that these are the only two powders. We're going to do a quick and dirty on the whole website and I'll tell y'all the other things that I didn't get to mention, but I have her Airbrush Flawless Finish. This is, I think, her more original, more OG powder and it's skin tone colored. This is in One Fair. And then there's her new one and this is the Airbrush Brightening Flawless Finish Complexion Perfecting Eye and Face Micro Powder. There's another reason that my eyes are a little bit bright right now. I made sure to use this specifically underneath my eyes so that y'all can see exactly what it looks like on its own on top of that concealer. So I think that each of these actually serves an awesome purpose. And I tend to really complain about white powders because I feel like they just gather and look white a lot of the time. But the fact that they call this a micro powder, it really is. I mean, it is so, so, so micro milled. It is like crazy, crazy fine. I don't know if it would necessarily reflect 
in, you know, flash photography, it probably would, I would be careful, but it does have this little bit of radiance to it that I feel like puts it ahead of something like the Westman Atelier or even that Givenchy that we were just talking about. I just think that this one goes the extra mile, especially if you're someone who likes to be able to manipulate light on your skin without using like a shimmery highlighter. She does have a lot of textures in her line. I really admire that about her line. Like she doesn't say, oh, I already have this highlighter. Therefore, that's my branded highlighter. That's our proprietary highlighter. We're not gonna do any more. She has all of these like gradations of different textures. And I think we sacrifice a little bit on undertones and like shade selection because of that, but she does do amazing, amazing textures. And I find that that makes it easy to approach the brand. Like anything you get in your hands does have a little bit of a je ne sais quoi to it. When you put it on the skin, you're like, ooh, I'm getting the Charlotte Tilbury vibe. You know, you're getting that luminosity. Now, this is something that I, again, it was like one of those products that I heard so much about before I got it in my hands. And so I had really high expectations for it. It's a very, very pretty powder that does not complain. The Charlotte Tilbury look is very luminous. It's very dewy looking, but in order for something to look flattering in that style on camera, you do have to selectively mattify in some places so you're not getting reflection everywhere. You wanna choose where you get your reflection. And so I think that this really falls right in line with Charlotte Tilbury's whole aesthetic because this is that blurring finish that doesn't super, super mattify, but it just keeps the light from reflecting so that it's not distracting and your eye goes to those beautiful shimmery spots on the skin. So it's like your you know, tops of the cheeks or the plump lips or the glittery eyes, things like that. She really plays with texture and I feel like her products really enable the user. Like it's a very beginner friendly way to still achieve what you're seeing. So I feel like it's not over promising and under delivering, especially on the powders. And I think that they both serve a distinct purpose. Okay. The woman has some bronzers, okay? She's got some bronzers in her collection. I feel like Patrick Ta does his Hail Marys at night, but to Charlotte Tilbury specifically. And I mean, I don't know that for a fact. They might be mortal enemies. I don't know their lives, but his entire summery, bouncy skin, like healthy aesthetic, it really feels like it has its roots in the like, unabashed Hollywood bronzer of it all that Charlotte Tilbury represents, at least in my mind. So let's talk about the first one that I got from her actually was this one. This is the Film Star Bronze and Glow. And this is the one that I kind of made fun of because it's called a bronze and glow, but like, is it a bronzer? Is it a contour? I think it's a contour. <laughs> And the highlighter is gorgeous. It's so pretty, but it took her a while to come out with multiple shades in this. And I did buy the mini, but the mini didn't even come in multiple shades at the time. I don't know if she's expanded that, but if not, we need it, Charlotte, because this is a cult favorite for a reason. I adore this for what I used it for today. I like the contour, like the matte contour, the highlight, it's a very sophisticated, highlight that just happens to shine when the light hits you and kind of nothing more. The other thing that I like about this particular highlight is that it works beautifully as an eyeshadow highlight. So using it on my inner corners, using it on my brow bone, it is so smoothing, it's so blurring. And I feel like it's easy to overlook this because it's been around for so long, but it really has stood the test of time. And I think that it's quite lovely, especially as a Contour, that's just my personal take. Now, this is the Airbrush Bronzer, a matte bronzing filter for face and body. I love this luxurious pan. I love that it pops out and refills. I did really love this, but I don't use this as like an all over bronzer anymore. This is the shade one fair. Maybe I should go a shade deeper because it's just a little bit yellow green for me. And that's the only thing really. It's a perfectly good formula. I think that it's lovely. And you can tell I've actually made a pretty substantial, well, I don't know if you can tell, but I've made a pretty substantial dent in there. There, you can see it. For one reason or another, I think I moved on to things that had a little bit more effect to them and a little bit better of undertones for my skin as my collection grew <laughs> and I realized how many options there were. But I do think that this is lovely. I would just, just like any other bronzer range. It's just about whether it matches your undertones. So if a more yellow bronzer works for you, outstanding. It's not orange. It's a little yellow and a little tiny bit like oyster green. Same goes for this guy right here. So this is the beautiful skin sun kissed glow bronzer. And this is her newest one. Can we open it? 
There we go. And it's this really intensely pigmented cream. I mean, intensely pigmented. What would I compare that to? It's like a velveteen kind of thick suede consistency. Now, my first impressions of this were, uh, no. <laughs> I was like, it's just too thick and it picks up weird and it's also quite cool toned. Like I said, it's the same kind of like oyster green kind of leans a little bit yellow color for me that doesn't work perfectly in comparison to some of the other things in my collection. And so I did kind of use it a couple times and put it down and forget about it. I picked it back up when I remembered that they had sent a brush. So the, this is the only makeup item that I've ever been gifted in because I asked. I could not find shade number one anywhere in stock and so I emailed them and they were like, we found one for you. So thank you to them for sending me this. And yes, they sent a brush with it. The brush makes all the difference in the world. But was there anything particularly special about her Kabuki brush? Not really. It just has to be something pretty dense, but also pretty soft because it's going to need to pick up the product and it's going to need to like lay it down in a buffing motion that isn't going to disturb the makeup underneath it. And I feel like the brush actually made a pretty big difference for me, but that doesn't mean it's the only way to apply this product. I've seen plenty of people use a sponge or just use a really light hand with a larger brush, something like that. Uh, and it works great. This is the BK105. She's huge. So for me, it was worth trying it and trying it again to try and get my head around it. And I think that it is a lovely product, but unlike a lot of her other formulas, there's a little more of a learning curve with this one. And I think that my initial kind of misgivings with it were because I was so accustomed to her formulas being so user-friendly, so beginner-friendly. And so when this one wasn't, I was just like, well, and I was like really bratty about it, but I think that it's worth giving it a shot. We give brands far more chances than that. So I think that it's actually really lovely. It just happens to not quite be my shade. Okay, here we go. Y'all knew it was coming. These are the light wands, the things that are basically going viral all over again on TikTok. And I got the contour wand. I got the Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand. It's a blush, a, a high blush, she calls it. And the Pillow Talk Beauty Light Wand, which is the easy highlighter. I'll go ahead and swatch these, even though I did apply all of them. Now they have this, you know, light wand. This is a very familiar delivery system at this point because she was the one who kind of made it a big deal. And honestly, I couldn't really decide what shade to get. So I ended up just going for all three. Like it, this was truly a product of indecision. I was like, I just need to know. And I'm glad that I got these three because I did. I ended up with a very pretty kind of rosy highlight. I ended up with a very pretty highlighty blush or a, a high blush, not to be confused with a blush light. Anyway, I also got this contour wand and that is in the shade Fair Medium. And one of the things that I was very pleased by, especially with this contour wand, was just how pigmented and saturated the shade is. It was a little goes a long way, but also not muddy. And you can see that the contour obviously is a lot less shimmery than those light ones. Same delivery system, but very, very different ideas, right? I think that the contour wand might be like my favorite of the three, but they're still all tippy top gorgeous. Like as you're putting them on, you're going, yeah, okay. Okay, I get it. Like it's an instant sell. There are plenty of things that like that bronze or like you have to give it a chance before you really get your head around it. But these are just such an instant sell and they look so good. Like the moment you put them on, they look so good and they look great on camera. That's the reason they fly off the shelves. And I think that one huge advantage of them is that they surprise people who didn't know that they could wear this kind of finish on their skin. You might think that something like this is just not gonna work on you. Let me tell you, it's got the intelligence built into it. It's really beautiful. I do recommend putting something on under it, a foundation or something. I don't recommend putting this straight on your skin unless you've got like <laughs> just totally glycerin gorgeous, bouncy skin when you wake up in the morning, then, you know, do you. <laughs> Do you, honestly, go live your life. But for those of us who, for one reason or another, probably look at this and say, that's too shimmery, it's too pearly, it's gonna look really weird on me. I'm not gonna speak for everybody, but I would challenge that assertion. And they're very easy to use. Again, there is a reason that these are viral. And also something worth noting here, the contour dries down. These do not. They stay a little bit serum-y, but like, 
they're super hydrating too. So I appreciate that there's a really big distinction between the two formulas. It's not just like a color. This might be a good time to mention, I did buy these all on her website and there are a lot of ways to save money on her pretty high prices by bundling these things. I think that I got all three of these in a bundle together and it knocked a certain percentage off. So if that's something that you're interested in, like buy, buying in bulk, the main way to save money on her website is by buying multiple things like in a set. All right, the last few things here before we go on to the website, I got the Pillow Talk Lip and Cheek Glow. This is the Love and Light Lip and Cheek Glow. It is a cream blush and I got it in the shade Color of Dreams. You could see why this would be appealing to me. It's just a really nice neutral, like slightly mauve leaning pink dewy cream blush. Now, I wasn't as impressed by this as I expected to be. I do think that this formula has been around for a while. And in that sense, it's a pretty unsophisticated formula. It's kind of like someone took a Tower 28 blush and like mixed it with clear. It's just a little bit diluted and a little bit balmy. It's like equal parts texture and color, less so just color. And for that reason, like I don't think this is a run, do not walk situation, but I think that the color is really nice and I enjoyed putting it on. I feel like especially for the people who like a Patrick Ta moment where it's like you do the powder blush and then you finish with something that brings the skin finish back in. This is very much a single pan of what you would get in the duos from Patrick Todd, the blush duos, very much what this is. So I think that it is lovely, but again, out of everything else that I have and out of everything else in her collection, this is probably one of the least sophisticated formulas. I tried the Happy Kiss and I got it in the shade Crystal. It is this like little click up balm. Right? I, I've had one of her glosses in the past. It was a good gloss. They're pretty overpriced in my opinion. I mean, it was a very pretty gloss. It was like the collagen gloss and it's got that little heart on it and the experience was really nice. But like, if that doesn't matter to you at the end of the day, it is just a gloss. And at the end of the day, this is just a really pleasant, healthy, bouncy, non-sticky kind of slightly shiny balm. The other thing about these is the pictures online are wildly inaccurate. Like it says crystal happy kiss and I just rolled the dice and hoped that it was clear because the picture online did not look clear at all. Like it was super built up to the point where every color looked really bizarre and these are almost entirely just like a sheer wash. So extrapolate from here, but Happy Kiss in Crystal is just clear. And I like it, I do. I use it as a lip prep. I could use it as an overnight lip treatment because it has a stick to a, a tenacity, where it's like, almost feels like it's a little bit waterproof. And I really like the delivery system. I will say the packaging is pretty like, meh. <laughs> I was hoping for something that looked a little more luxurious than that. This was my Charlotte Tilbury is overrated moment. Pretty much any opportunity I got and probably still any opportunity I get. The expectation versus reality gap on the eyes to mesmerize, especially in the shade Oyster Pearl, is something that it's just called to memory anytime somebody's like disappointing overpriced product. I'm like, da da da. And that's because I have different expectations of an eyeshadow. Like I understand that this is a formula that simplifies people's lives because they just want something there. And it's a very pretty color that's dialed in. It's a very pretty texture. And there are plenty of people who would, given the opportunity, just wear that color on their eyes every single day. Suffice to say, I'm trying to accomplish more than that on my eyes on a daily basis. I'm trying to get shadow. I'm trying to get light. I'm trying to get the illusion of my eyes being bigger, wider set, thicker eyelashes, all of those things. And a movable cream no matter how pretty it is, one shade is not going to cut it, especially when it's a little bit shimmery like this, because I just can't have that kind of shimmeriness in my crease. I'm not shimmer in the crease club. I'm matte in the crease club. And for that purpose, I mean, I used this as a base today and then I just ended up kind of covering it up with other things and it was fine. But I feel like even if this is the absolute like holy grail color for you. There are other things in this color that have a more tenacious formula to them with higher fidelity that are going to actually last all day. This, I don't know about everybody, but this crease is on me instantly and I don't have oily eyelids. So that's why I only have one and good on you if this completely solves your eyeshadow routine on a daily basis. But if you like doing eye makeup, like I like doing eye makeup, like if this is sort of the, the look you're going for, this is going to be heckin' frustrating because it's just 
quite wet and not super manipulable on a brush and with my fingers. I'm just not able to shape it the way that I want to and it's not just Charlotte Tilbury. This goes across the board for all the formulas that are kind of like this. The Auric one, the Tom Ford one, they're just not my taste. I think this was the first formula of that kind that I ever tried and I was just like, really? Really? This is what everybody loves? But it's just not for me. What is for me <laughs> is this. <laughs> this is the Exaggerize Bigger Brighter Eyes Filter or, you know, it's a luxury quad. It never says the word eyeshadow anywhere on this package. Nonetheless, this is an eyeshadow quad and it's so lovely. We have coolness, we have warmth, we have depth, we have brightness, and we have this lovely little pop of excitement. Now her Celestials, I've said this before, I'll say it again, her Celestials are a little bit subtle and I think that, that is in an effort to make them wearable for a lot of different skin maturities and the subtlety of them is a little bit more sophisticated but that doesn't mean that you can't get something totally awesome out of this. I love her Celestials. I think they're really really elegant. So yeah sparkle is exciting. Everybody should be able to wear sparkle and I just think that there's a place in the market for subtle sparkle as well and I adore this. The main thing that I like about this particular colorway is just how these colors are so native to my skin tone like there's just this this shade right here man if i could have everything in that shade absolutely awesome love it and i'm wearing plum eyeliner today i'm wearing the persona eyeliner in plum and i feel like it just ah it sets this look off without stealing the show. If I were wearing like a really dark eyeliner with this, like a deep, you know, brown black or something, it would just kind of kill the illusion, but everything's a little bit desaturated. So I feel like that eyeliner is the perfect complement for it. And when I was done with all of it, in order to accentuate the crease a little bit more, add some coolness, add a little bit more matte to it, I did go back in with the Filmstar Bronze and Glow, just, well actually I went with both. I did the highlighter, like I said, inner corner and brow bone, and then I used this contour on my eyes, and I think that it really completed it. So it's not necessarily always a standalone for me, but I think these two together is an epic combo. That's everything that's on my face today. I have tried other things from her, so we're gonna go to the website. I'm going to just kind of scroll through and tell y'all what I've tried and what I haven't. Charlotte Tilbury. I have my way of like saying so many of these brands. I'm like, Natasha Denerna. And that's how I always say, Charlotte Tilbury. I wanna go on record as saying I hate her website, especially on my phone. It's so hard to use. There's things flashing everywhere and there's laggy photos and everything is just like big and wild and promising something and screaming at you and popping up in your face. It's a little much. Okay, I have not tried the Airbrush Flawless Foundation because it's just not my finish particularly. I was very pleased when she put out the Beautiful Skin Foundation and I stand by those assumptions because this is literally exactly what I would be going for. The Airbrush Flawless Foundation, Innovative Foundation Secret Flawless, poreless looking, confident complexion, stale day weightless, full coverage formula with a natural matte finish. It's just not my thing. This is my thing. It's I'm going to make that look bad because my skin is dry, basically. And it's just not something that I go for. She has an invisible UV flawless primer that I also have not tried. And the second ingredient in that after water is ethyl hexyl methoxycinamate, which is also known as octanoxate, which is why I don't own that. I have tried her Magic Vanish. I just got it in the wrong shade. I think I just bought whatever shade was being used by the influencer that was telling me about it, and I thought we had similar skin tones, but I was wrong. So yeah, I know that Kyla really likes this one, my friend Kyla Fish, and I have used it. I like the formula. It's a little bit matte, but again, you can pretty much manipulate any of her formulas by using enough like skin prep. So it's very like, it's very matte and stiff. It's nothing like the Becca. Aha, okay, obviously we haven't talked about the Hollywood Flawless Filter. I have owned this before. It's not my thing. It's too thin for what it is to me. Like I don't dislike it, but I don't find any occasion in my routine where I feel like I miss it because I, like I said, I've had it before. So it was a perfectly good match for me at the time. I, I liked it, it was pretty, but I think that there are better things even in her collection than that. Like I like the light ones better than I like the Hollywood Flawless Filter and that's 
that's great. You know what I mean? I'm glad that people really like it. I'm glad that it really fits in some people's routines. It's just not really my thing. Her finishing spray, I did buy that. It was a little bit more mattifying than I wanted or maybe just not glossy enough for what I like. I'm a MAC Fix Plus girl all day long. Her lipsticks, I am also not much of a lipstick person and her colors don't really appeal to me. I've always joked that her motto is, do you like pink? If not, maybe you'll like brown. Oh, brown's not your thing? Well, let me introduce you to my friend Pink. There's just not a lot of nuance a lot of times. I mean, they'll go maybe a little bit violet or a little bit coral, but we're not talking about anything like wildly off the beaten path. And I feel like her lipstick shades are all, every time I've swatched them in store or anything, they're always just a little bit too pink. They're just pink. Everything turns pink on me, so it tends to go wildly pink, and it's just, I've never found a shade that I wanted to wear in her lipstick formulas, and that's why I don't have them. I've also tried her Pillow Talk lip liner formula. She really founded the idea of overdrawing, I feel like. Called it the lip cheat, you know? I feel like she deserves her place in history for that. But other than that, like, it's just, a, it's just a really nice color of a lip liner. I realize I forgot to mention an episode on my channel that people probably don't know about. Like the majority of people probably don't know about it. And that was when during a Sephora sale, like a couple of years ago, I bought a bunch of Charlotte Tilbury stuff and had the worst luck. I ended up with a Pillow Talk blush that was marked as a regular Pillow Talk blush, but it was unanimous in my comments that it was one of the high intensity ones. So it looked wild on me. It was like really muddy and dark and just didn't look right at all. And I was like, why does everyone love this? And everyone in my comments was like, you bought the high intensity one. And I was like showing them, I was like, it doesn't say that. So I had to share that little anecdote because it was just like, I just couldn't catch a break for the longest time. <laughs> So if you were there for that, let me know if you remember that. She's got brow products that I've never tried. She's got mascaras that I've tried, but again, were un unmemorable because I am a tubing mascara nerd. She came out with a Pillow Talk push-up lashes in this really awesome burgundy shade that my friend Holly Beth, who is a redhead, wore on her Instagram, and I think it looks fabulous. I'm afraid that it would almost be too desaturated for me, like it would be kind of clay colored on my eyelashes, and maybe that it's just not meant for me, you know, it's maybe meant for redheads, so like that's fantastic. Oh my gosh, it is storming like crazy outside, so I'm sorry about the light changing so much, but I am ready to conclude with my final thoughts here. So to me, is Charlotte Tilbury's entire brand overrated, overpriced, overhyped? Not to anywhere near the extent that I used to think. Especially because one of the first products that I ever tried from her after trying her foundations was the Eyes to Mesmerize. It really set me off on a path of just, you know, having a chip on my shoulder, like I said, being really cynical about her products. But I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I didn't get some of her marquee products, like her light ones, that made her such a household name for a lot of people. I didn't get those in my hands until very recently because they've been sold out for ages and they're pretty expensive. So I think that there was a time in my life where while I was trying other of her products and being kind of unimpressed by them, like the Flawless Filter, buying the wrong shade in this or that or whatever, for the longest time I just had bad luck that it put me off of having like an optimistic view of her formulas and now that it's like I've gotten some of those other things in my hands, I've had some time to let my tastes breathe, you know, and get my head around other formulas, I realize the advantage of Charlotte Tilbury's line is user friendliness. The shades being so skin native, yes, it's easy to poke fun at the unadventurousness of it, but it makes it very easy to use, okay? It makes it pretty beginner friendly because they're colors that are probably already existing in your skin, you know, for the most part. The textures are going to make your skin glow. It's very easy with Charlotte Tilbury's products to achieve the Charlotte Tilbury look. That to me is the selling point all day long because you know that the two big things that I judge makeup on, on my channel is, was it easy? And was it fun? Those are, e especially these guys, so easy, so fun to use. So I'd love to be able to use products, talk about products, share products with y'all that I feel like anyone could get results from. Like when I show you something that's not such a learning curve that you're like, you get it in your hands and you're like, well, but I can't do what Khaki did. I kind of intentionally keep my skills <laughs> intermediate, you know? I don't want to become really advanced at using makeup because I don't want to lose my ability to judge makeup as 
an intermediate makeup user, as a normal makeup user. I am not a professional makeup artist. And I feel like if I'm taking a step back from my experience with the brand, my, you know, knowledge of it existing from the moment that I like started doing my makeup, it was one of the first brands I personally remember having the makeup artist as the face of the brand. Being like, I am the creative mind behind this, these are the looks that I do, this is the aesthetic that the aesthetic that I achieve, and these are the tools in order to achieve that. I mean, you still see it on her website, right? This is the description on the Beautiful Skin Foundation. Darlings, my Beautiful Skin Foundation gives everyone skin that looks beautifully hydrated, plumper, smoother, and brighter. There's so much capital and bolding, this medium coverage hydrating foundation has been expertly formulated with skincare ingredients to combine instant glow and buildable coverage with long-term skincare benefits. With brightening rose complex and hydrate, now I'm just getting into like, I sound like Robin Leach. <laughs> with, with brightening rose complex and hydrating hyaluronic acid to improve the look of skin with each wear, my asterisk, my beautiful skin foundation is the secret to your best healthy looking skin day every day. Okay. I'm just being ridiculous and over the top at this point, and I don't have a very good British accent. Sound like Eddie is making fun of the Queen. Oh, you're a plumber. What on earth is that? I love that her personality is still such a cornerstone of the brand, and that now you can see in 2022, however many years after the brand was founded, how many other makeup artists who have made their own brands are following her business model of saying like, this is my aesthetic, these are the tools to achieve it, and making it user-friendly in the sense of textures that might be a little bit, a little bit new, a little bit challenging, things that are going to give you a certain look, but they are approachable, they're user-friendly, and they are accompanied by this like social media presence, even before there was a real social media presence, of instruction to go along with it. Lisa Eldridge case in point. Like it's a business model that works and we have Charlotte Tilbury to thank for it. So I would say that from here on out, I would like to just like remove the chip from my shoulder. I would like to remove my cynicism. And setting all that aside, the vision of her brand really does come together when you use these things in concert. And I'm really glad that I did. Man, my cheeks look awesome. I can't stop looking at them. Can't stop looking at my cheeks. I am now on board with the fantasy. So I hope y'all liked this. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I hope that y'all also enjoy following me through my journeys like this, where I do tend to just get cynical about certain brands because of bad luck, but I'm really glad that I went in and tried all of this and got a better idea of the brand overall. I also want to thank y'all for 70,000 subscribers. It is such a big number when I look at it. I'm like, 70,000? That's insane. That's insane. That's more people than went to my college at one time. So thank you. If y'all liked this, please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.